hi welcome to this episode in our series on flex and rigid flex today we are going to be talking about the different um, flex and rigid flex constructions and the complexities moving along the technology spectrum we're going to start today with a rigid pcb as our kind of base level to start out with so this is just typical rigid printed circuit board the next level of complexity that we're going to look at is going to be flexible circuit so maybe something similar to this design. So you're going to move to flex from rigid when you have the need for space, weight, or packaging um, improvements, being able to fold and bend this into a specific package. There's a cost associated with moving to that technology, and that cost is really driven um, primarily by a few things. One is material costs themselves. The raw materials are going to be a little bit more expensive. Also driving that cost is the special handling that is required of that material within your fabrication process. So if you can imagine a flexible two or three mil thick piece of material, oftentimes an 18 by 24 inch um, panel, it's very flimsy, very hard to handle. So special handling needs to be involved in fabrication, you know, hold by the corners, a lot of special um, transportation methods, racking and things like that involved with just processing through um, normal PCB processes. In addition, during that processing, if you can imagine, develop at strip process, all that's kind of conveyorized with rollers. Um, that thin material is prone to get caught up in those rollers, so that requires additional processing and handling, often um, special equipment or taping and untaping leader, leader boards to make sure that the equipment or the panels run through the equipment very well. Then if you're moving beyond flex and you're moving into rigid flex, so something similar to this type of a design. The reason you're going to want to do that is if you've got a flexible application that needs to flex or bend and end use, but you have very dense component areas or need high layer count routing in the rigid sections, you're going to move to a rigid flex. Uh, rigid flex, again, is more expensive. It's going to be more complex to build as well. Um, the example that I was showing here is probably a pretty typical rigid flex construction. It's got um, rigid pieces on all of the outer layers with flex tails connecting all of those rigid pieces. That's going to be your lowest cost option of construction methods for rigid flex, but there's others available depending on what you need for your application. Um, next in that progression, I would say is if your flexible tails need to have plated through holes, certainly possible to build that construction, um, but it does require a lot of extra processing on the fabrication side. Essentially, all of those flex layers need to run through the PCB creation process before those layers are laminated into the rigid um, layers and then the full construction is run through the facility once again. And another great um, way to look at a packaging issue in a rigid flex construction involves you know, multiple tails going out in multiple directions. So maybe layers one and two are going to go this way and three and four are going to go over here, five and six over here, and maybe seven and eight end up up here. It's a great use and creative use of um, solving a packaging problem, but it definitely adds complexity to the build. Um, in that case, I would highly recommend working with your fabricator well ahead of time as you're creating the stack up because there's a lot of different ways to approach um, that type of construction. Um, and you know, your fabricator is dealing with these types of complex constructions day in and day out and are really going to help guide you to be sure that you are not adding any additional cost. Um, the next level I would say after that is a bookbinder flex. And they're not as common today as they might have been in the past. They're very, very difficult um, constructions to build for a couple of reasons. Um, essentially what you're doing with that is you are using um, each different layer is going to be a slightly different length, building from you know, shortest to longest to help create um, a very flexible circuit when your constructions are getting thicker. Um, so very much like a book binder, as the name would imply. Um, it's difficult to process for a couple of reasons. Um, one is as you're doing that and, and laminating those layers together, you're actually creating a buckle in the panel as each layer is longer than the next. Um, so now, as a fabricator, you're no longer fabricating in a flat version, and you know the equipment set for fabricators is definitely geared towards flat um, panels. And I wanted to pause here for just a second because I thought this was a good place to kind of showcase um, a common misconception in the terminology between um, a rigid flex construction and a bookbinder construction. Um, it's very common in a rigid flex construction to use a loose leaf type of um, stack up kind of similar to this, so that these layers are a lot more flexible 
um, as your layer count is getting higher. This is um, oftentimes referred to incorrectly as a book binder. Um, book binders would be flat, um, but with each layer, as I said, being slightly different length. In this case, um, with a loose leaf rigid flex construction, all the layers are the same length, they're just not bonded together. Just wanted to pause and point out that, that um, common misconception. And then moving past the bookbinder technology, we are looking at um, SAP and MSAP, so semi-additive pro processing or modified semi-additive processing. Um, this is an emerging technology um, that is, you know, it's in a couple of high volume applications offshore, namely our smartphones, but um, for the rest of the world, it's an emerging technology. So it's able to, um, using an additive process, create very fine lines down to one mil line in space, and that may be on flex, rigid flex, or rigid technology. So just something to keep in mind that that will be something that we're going to be talking more about in a future um, video, and you will be seeing more and more of that um, out in the market. So just as a quick recap, we just quickly ran through the different um, cost versus technology progressions going from rigid flex, rigid flex, bookbinder, and um, additive technology. So I hope you enjoyed the information here and that you share that with your peers and colleagues that may be interested in that information as well. And I hope that you'll be able to join us for our next video, which will be experienced flex and rigid flex designers asking for their real world advice to those that might be new to flex and rigid flex. Oops. <laughs>